Okay, let's get started. Uh, thank you all for taking time uh, to join us for this webinar. Um, today, we're going to talk about a few things, and I'll, and I'll mention what we're going to talk about in just a second. I like to go over uh, Road Dental Lab, uh, you know, just, just real quickly who we are. We're, we're a full service lab in, uh, in Independence, Ohio. We're a little bit south of Cleveland. We have a lot of brands and products that surround us. It's, it's one of the things we um, are very proud of, our partnerships in the industry. Some of these things are created by us. Some of them are partnerships. Uh, but it, um, it's, it's a wonderful environment, uh, not isolated, you know, as uh, just a lab that makes uh, crowns and bridges and so forth. We make a lot of very impactful products in the marketplace uh, for guided surgery, uh, prosthetically. Um, always want to be on the bleeding edge, as they say. And we're going to talk about some of those things today. And we'll talk about some regular things too, regular um, types of surgical guides. So anywhere from uh, a day to day to some of the extraordinary. So this is where we are. We work in uh, uh, many countries, uh, kind of reaching more over into Europe now through our partners in, uh, in Ireland, through this Chorus 3D partnership, through this Chrome, which leads to other types of products. Um, we have a partner in Saudi Arabia who we worked with at Ohio State. Prasadonis went back, went back home. We work with him, a couple of partners in Australia, and then in every state uh, we're, we're working. From, from single guides through to uh, full arch guides, two supported guides, which are the most common. Uh, rest on teeth, they're straightforward guides, uh, sometimes in some tissue areas, and they're, um, they're often uh, flapless, uh, but often they can be flapped too. I mean, they, you can go either way. We like to know if they're gonna have a flap because then often we need to uh, remove some material uh, from the from the labial or buccal part of the guide to make room for the flap, or you have to extend the flap down to the bottom or adjust yourself. Uh, really, these are available for all implant systems, uh, whether it's a pilot guide or a guided kit. Um, they're available for just about any implant. Uh, and to acquire a regular two supported guide is just a CBCT scan and an impression or models. Uh, so if it's a intraoral impression from uh, one of the many digital impression machines, we, we work with all of them. Um, I suggest that um, you upload the CBCT and upload the digital impressions all in one event. Uh, it, it, it makes cases go more smoothly um, as opposed to um, uploading your digital impressions through the, the Serona portal or through the, uh, you know, the CEREC portal and then uploading the DICOM through our site. Just export your STLs from your scanner combine them with your CBCT and then write the case up online. That's the most efficient way to make a guide. Um, a trend that we've seen lately is uh, sleeveless guides. So these are, you know, the bottom right one's not too common, uh, but it's a tissue supported guide that has pins and it doesn't have any sleeves in it. So that's on a very far extreme, uh, not too many of those, but two supported uh, and just tissue supported uh, sleeveless guides. And the nice thing about sleeveless is that um, it's more economical. Uh, we don't have to put sleeves in them. And, and, and it also has less human error because sleeves use cement to bind, the, to bond them into the guides, All right? So if you don't have the human part of it, then it could be more accurate. Um, it's also um, an a la carte item. So if you print in your office, we can design a guide, you print, uh, clean, cure, go right to surgery. So it's much more efficient as well. And it might be more accurate. Um, uh, Megagen and uh, um, Hyacin and some other companies out there only make sleeveless guides for their, for their kits. You know, some kits really do need a sleeve because we use OEM sleeves, like, uh, like the Strauman BLX. It's a peak insert. Uh, 3i Navigator, their sleeve uh, indicates rotation. So we like to use theirs. And, and Versa, you have to for the C drive. So it depends on what, guide you're, what guided kit you're using. Uh, but most can be sleeveless at this point. Um, you know, and, and one kind of a pitfall of, um, of sleeves is that uh, occasionally they can come out. It's kind of rare, but it is just um, super glue, you know, that holds them in there. And there can be a lot of torquing in the mouth, especially if you have some binding with uh, driving an implant in. Uh, so if you can go without a sleeve, you want to take the leap, um, just order it on our website. It's one of the drop downs if you want to go sleeveless or not. Um, nice alternative. Uh, and then there's, there's a la carte. 
So there's all different ways to acquire a guide. Uh, you can go what, uh, what we normally do, and that is we do everything. Uh, plan, design, print, ship, put the sleeves in. But if you're interested in planning them yourselves or printing yourself uh, or some combination, we offer just about everything here, uh, but the least expensive would be uh, we plan it um, and then you design it. And you can see there's just nice combinations here. And when you upload a case, you can see these options. They're all a la carte. Just click what you want us to do and what you want to do. Another very popular guide is just a tissue supported guide, full arch tissue supported. Um, so sometimes they have some teeth involved. The patient has some teeth, but it's maybe, uh, maybe this tooth isn't here on a lot of them. And so it's really uh, incumbent upon the fit um, to be accurate. You know, if you're, if you're on a tooth, you know, it's seated. If you're on tissue, you can move around a little bit, uh, a little bit of, a little bit of variance there. It's probably the least accurate guide, uh, but one way to make it very accurate is to make sure, you know, more accurate is to make sure that your scan appliance uh, seats perfectly because a scan appliance, which in the upper case here, this would have been a denture, right? We just kind of cut away the, the, the labial flange, but this was made from a denture in a dual scan process. So if the denture fits well, the guide will fit well, and then you'll have a successful surgery. Um, and and this, these are sometimes flapped, sometimes not flapped. That's uh, you know doctor preference. It may be uh, uh, um, incumbent on how much bone there is, bone width, whether you wanna see what's going on, whether you need to or not. Um, so it kind of depends, some variables of when you would choose or not choose uh, to, to lay a flap on these. Really works with all implant systems. Um, really any out there, especially if, um, especially if you have a guided kit, of course, but even pilot drills uh, can, be, can be used. And it's always a dual scan. So when you have a case like this, if, if you're not gonna load, then really all we need is a dual scan uh, of the prosthetic. We don't even need a bite in the posing. If we're going to make a denture, we're gonna make uh, any, anything immediate load, we wanna bite in an indenture, and a denture and a dual scan. And then maybe some photographs if we're really designing some teeth. There's bone supported. This is the simplest one to order because bone supported uh, doesn't require the posing occlusion, uh, doesn't require um, uh, the same type of uh, registration of models and so forth. So just a CBCT scan works. Uh, this would not be for loading a prosthetic or anything. Those require more records. But if you just want to put implants in, you can see this is a pilot drill. This would be a full flap. Uh, and the guide would rest on bone. And we've, we've been involved in this a long time, many, many years. And uh, it used to be that uh, the claim was that the bone supporter guide was the most accurate. But I, I don't think that that's true because uh, bone segmentation, bone rendering is not perfect. CBCTs are not perfect. The surface of bone is not as predictable as you, as you might think. And so these can take a little bit of effort to get them to seat in the exact right position and may, may even have some adjustment needed. So if anything, they're probably the least accurate when you compare to other, um, other processes for, um, for full arch. Um, we have some other unique uh, guides that we use for full arch. This is the bone channel guide. This one's kind of neat because a lot of these cases, you have to have bone reduction and osteotomies all in one day. Uh, you wouldn't want to split them up. Uh, but one thing we see often, uh, companies making surgical guides that uh, allow for osteotomy creation and implant placement, but not bone reduction. And so you see uh, often that the, that the sites are drilled, the implants are placed sub-crestal, uh, maybe even far sub-crestal, millimeters or more, you know, millimeters. And then the doctor adjusts bone down to the top of the heads of the implants. Well, that'll work, I guess, if you put some, uh, some comfort caps on, not comfort caps, um, some healing caps on it, um, uh, closure caps, so that you can protect the head of the implant. But that's a lot of guesswork, uh, just you know, kind of randomly adjusting bone until you get to an implant. And so I think a combination is much better. We've made many of these guides and you literally just take a burr and you would make a bone channel with your burr sideways. And maybe it's, um, you know, maybe it's making a bunch of holes, drilling straight through, or maybe a, a sideways cutting burr. I suppose you could use a saw, 
but you trim the bone down, the guide stays in the mouth, drill the sites, put the implants in, they'll be at the, at this bone level, take the guide out and then just uh, remove the bone where the, where the, uh, the pins are. It's pretty efficient. Um, this would be, uh, if, if you're, if you're going to do this, often this is a tissue supported guide. It can be a bone supported, could be a tissue. Usually, I'm sorry, usually a bone supported guide. So it's just a CBCT scan. And if it's edench, let's do a dual scan. Um, and especially if we're going to make a denture or something to load or the patient to take home, do a, do a dual scan if the patient is edentulous. Otherwise, upper, lower, bite, CT, and we can make one of these guides. You can see these two here are for edentulous. There's no teeth, right? On, if it's dentate, these are just a little bit trickier uh, because you have to put sites in between the teeth. So these are often for edentulous cases. Uh, or edentulated, and then this guide goes in. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this, but but we've made many many guides for Versa C dry uh, the C uh, C sleeve uh, with this and with our full arch cases. Even with Crawl, we've used this system. It's uh, it's a lovely system. Um, they they do have special sleeves with some of our kits. These uh, these burrs actually fit into our sleeves without without this holder, without this little device here. Uh, the burr itself fits right into our sleeves on some cases, kind of handy. Um, and it certainly is, uh, certainly has a, is a great tool for certain types of bone or certain types of situations, ridges, narrow ridges, sinus bumps, that type of thing. So those were simple guides up to more complicated guides. 